This class is X330 International Communication Strategies. Uh, the main goal of the class is to give students a model for understanding how to communicate with people from other cultures. Uh, we study a variety of factors by which to analyze, compare, and contrast cultures. And we want students to be able to apply these factors to their personal and professional lives. Now, in the segment we're about to watch, students are going to be applying both of these goals to a hypothetical business scenario. Um, in this scenario, they're working with a Chinese company providing Infotech solutions and working on three negotiating points, relatively small points, but that could have an important effect on the business. Now, in the first part of the semester, we studied a number of authorities on international communication uh, so that students could learn a set of factors by which to compare and contrast cultures. Uh, some specific categories that we covered were high and low context, whether people tend to emphasize the literal meanings of language or have a higher context or more implied approach to meanings, um, the general attitude toward age and seniority, uh, in a specific culture does age create privilege, um, whether people tend to be more individualistic or collectivist, uh, that is, whether the responsibility for your actions relates more to you as an individual or to various groups you might be affiliated with, uh, whether people are more results or relationship oriented, that is, whether they emphasize the ends of situations or the relationships that are created along with the process of doing business. Another important factor is the idea of face. Um, face is your reputation, your image, the level of respect people have for you. Um, face can be won or lost a dozen times throughout the course of a day. Uh, another factor is hierarchy. Um, hierarchy is your place in society and also your formal and informal reputation, again related to what kind of face you've gained in working through other people. Now in previous classes, um, I've given the students a set of characteristics that are said to be true about Chinese people and Chinese culture. These are a little oversimplified and that to really get into Chinese negotiation, for instance, you need to talk about a variety of regional negotiating styles. Um, also, for our purposes, uh, Chinese refers to people from the mainland of China. Now, Chinese people are said to be high context, that is, to be aware of the broad context of business and also of the implied meanings of things. They're said to be relationship-based. Uh, relationships are crucial. Um, age carries privilege, both in social and professional life. Uh, Chinese culture is also said to be somewhat hierarchical and vertical collectivist. Um, a vertical collectivist culture is one in which people are very interreliant on each other, but you still have a definite level of authority. Now, the concepts of face and quan shi are also very important in Chinese culture. Uh, face is your image. They can be enhanced or weakened many times throughout a day. And Quan Shi is um, building obligations from people by doing favors for them. And therefore, creating a network of friends, creating a network of business associates uh, with whom you share obligation and share favors and in turn share status. In today's class, the students will be using the scenario I gave them to answer three questions which are slight problems that have occurred in working with their Chinese partner. Um, I previously posted this on my electronic work site. Now I'm passing out hard copies so that the students can once again refer to the case and work in impromptu teams to come up with answers to three different questions. You're sent over to have a look through operations and see if there's any little tweaking you can do to make things more efficient. So, You've got three possible areas to tweak here. One is contractor the company outsources tech to is charging twice as much as normal for their services. Second, contractor is being paid out of different accounts, makes it hard to keep records. Third, Mr. Chen does all the personal approval of payments to individual vendors, which you think is kind of inefficient. You think he could delegate some of this stuff. So your challenge here is to 
figure out a way to talk with Mr. Chen, perhaps persuade Mr. Chen a little bit that things could be done slightly more efficiently. Now, you're going to analyze this in impromptu team context. So, here's a team. Here's a team. You can match up if you want to. Here's a team and here's a team. There's no one exact correct set of answers to the three problems, but there are in fact some wrong answers. Wrong answers would be answers that were inconsistent with what the students know about Chinese culture. So, um, let's go ahead and see how they do on the three questions. You have to make it seem not directly, not like you're questioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's kind of earned the Yeah, Fred, good Can't that be like, you know, as respect for him? Right. So take a couple of minutes, come up with a recommendation for each area which you'd like to address. So being charged twice as much for outsourcing as is necessary, paying out of different accounts, and Mr. Chen's desire to personally approve payments to vendors. Well, first of all, a couple of questions. Is it relevant that Mr. Chen is twice as old as you are? Yes. Okay, to what extent is that relevant? Uh, because it's a role where older people are more respected in the Chinese culture and East Asian language in general, which is what the book talks about, versus in American culture is when we view those people as like outdated versus, you know, they have more knowledge because in China you get experience from learning it through people rather than trying to find it yourself. Yeah. Okay, cool explanation. And to what extent does that affect how you negotiate with somebody? It's like what uh, they said in here, you know, for example, when you talk about uh, you can't have them lower price because then it would, they would lose face or if you try to do something that's against what Mr. Chen would say, he's twice your age, he's losing face to someone younger, then you have to give recommendations. That's one focus point of our group is that when we were coming up with recommendations, we wanted to do it in a way where it would actually empower him and give him mutual benefit and make his job easier because our recommendations make the overall business process better by making things more faster and efficient for him to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and take recommendation number one. Um, a contractor, the company outsources some tech to is charging twice as much as necessary for services. So how can you take that philosophy in and come up with a way to negotiate that point? You're in partnership now. You don't think you ought to be paying twice as much as necessary for the services. So how are you going to negotiate that point? Yeah. I think maybe not the entire strategy itself, but just one key aspect of the strategy would be to find an ally, maybe in the company who's also older and actually from his company and just kind of ally with him and have him be your mediator or the person who talks in between and that way you're not directly going to the top of the company where you know there may still be power structure in between you can't really jump to his level at that time and you can kind of have a more you know l less of a loss of face and more of an open communication moment. Okay we got a recommendation for forming an ally. Can we run with that? Blake? We said to avoid losing face that uh, this company could potentially look for um, an alternative supplier that could offer lower prices. Um, so instead of asking your, your current supplier for price concessions, you can go to a new supplier and ask for price concessions and hopefully avoid losing face. Okay, uh, switch suppliers. Not, not completely, just temporarily, possibly, um, until you maybe could establish a relationship with the other supplier. Okay. So we've got a recommendation for a different supplier. <laughs> Let's go ahead and write down some of these. We've got forming an ally.
starting a recommendation with a new supplier, but maybe not an exclusive relationship. Aaron? Wouldn't that hurt one of the Chinese business practices' main focuses of keeping the relationship at the forefront of all business? Because they, one of their main focuses is extending the Guanxi network, which is like the whole relationship focus. So if you're looking to go to a new supplier, doesn't that kind of, uh, um, shouldn't it, isn't it a way of saying that we don't trust you because you're overcharging us? And especially since he's really good friends with the, the company, isn't that likely to be seen by Mr. Chen as a bad decision? And couldn't that lose face for you for actually making such a suggestion? Yeah, we mentioned in the case description that that supplier had been dealing with the company since the company started. So it would be pretty tricky to try and start a relationship with a new supplier. Because as, you sa as Aaron said, great, great potential for loss of face if it wasn't done very tactfully. Yeah. Maybe to piggyback on that, um, I, I don't know, maybe to appeal to the relationship and the reciprocity, so maybe the supplier would want to kind of have a lower price for you because you have been doing business for such a long time, so they want to give back and instead of being in debt to that relationship. Okay. Um, okay, so the rec recommendation is since you've had such a good long-term relationship, perhaps at this point you can start negotiating for a lower price, Aaron? Uh, we had a kind of similar idea ex with slight variation, but we were thinking maybe you actually go and talk to the supplier with Mr. Chen and maybe use language that would suggest uh, maybe then lowering your price, you don't come out and say it, so maybe they have the opportunity to say that, hey, we'll drop our price if it helps you out, so they save face by making the suggestion themselves, and you stay in the relationship. Okay, that, that is a very, very nice and subtle suggestion and gives us some possibility for a higher context language. Can anybody think of a good way to say that without saying it? <laughs> Well, we were kind of thinking of saying something along the lines of, as you're going into the, the dinner, you're talking, and then you say something like, oh, we're struggling with, you know, with this and this, and then they have the opportunity to say, oh, but we can help you, and then they gain face, you don't really lose face, and everyone's happy. Okay. Well, I think we're well on our way to making people happy now. <laughs> And, you know, prob probably the broad... Go ahead. Well, what happens if they don't catch on to that? Then what, what's I mean, next? They are a higher context culture, so they're going to be more attuned to these kind of subtle nuances and metaphors for that kind of thing. I think another thing they can do is just based on a high context culture, you can go and you know, list multiple accomplishments that you made in some of the better areas, but then also single out some of the areas, you know, oh, well, we're doing wonderful with A, B, and C, and we're just kind of having a few little issues here, which is really the area that they can most help out in, and that without actually coming out and saying it would help too. Okay. Great, great recommendation for a higher context approach without directly confronting the problem. Because if you said what, said what was going well, then the category that you didn't mention would obviously be a category of focus. So point number two, <clears throat> contractors being paid out of different accounts making the record keeping more difficult. So you'd like to see all of the expenses come out of the same account. Now that's a little thing. Can anybody speculate why Mr. Chen might be doing it that way to start with? Paying people out of different accounts when you think it would be more efficient to pay out of one account. I mean, an obvious possible reason is that maybe different people are in charge of different accounts and he doesn't want to have to consolidate his workforce of people that have worked there for a long time. So in order to keep people employed, that's kind of the method that they're using. Yeah, I think that's quite possible. Blake? I would guess that he just doesn't want to make it clear as to how much they're actually paying um, the suppliers. It's probably clear that they're overpaying, but by taking the money out of different accounts, you don't have one huge amount coming out of one account. It's a lot of small amounts coming out of multiple accounts. 
Okay, so we got, we got two possible reasons there. One is that the different accounts are different people's areas of jurisdiction, basically, and you want to keep things the way they are in terms of the workforce. The other one is to possibly not show just how much you're paying in the overpayment situation. So taking those into consideration, can anybody think of a, a good argument for, well, it'd be better if we just paid out of one account? It's a little thing, but a lot of negotiation points are, in fact, little things. Ryan, do you have any insights on? Well, uh, you probably would want to approach him by asking why they're doing it that way, since he is sort of like the, the number two person in the company and has such authority, they have to have some, they have a reason for doing it. So if you can figure out what their reason is, then you can approach him and say, well, maybe it, it could be easier for you to have that number coming out of one account so that it's clear how much is coming out and you have your, your number set so you see that more clearly and your accounting is easier. Mm -hmm. But you would want to approach it so that you maintain his face and he's able to explain himself and his reasoning first. Yeah, good recommendation. Uh, that point you can't really deal with if you find out the why of it. If you find out why he's doing it that way, yes? I'm just wondering, if, I think that's a really great idea, but I just, I'm wondering if, um, I don't know, just because of like the hierarchy situation, whether if you ask a question of a superior and then they feel like they're defending themselves, whether that would go off well. <coughs> Well, it isn't exactly the same situation because he's older than you are, but you're partners. So it's not really a superior subordinate situation, it's a partner and partner situation. So there wouldn't be quite as much problem with face in that, but you'd, of course you'd still have the age difference. So I think we'll go with the recommendation, postpone action until we find out more about the why. Third, Mr. Chen feels that he has to personally approve payments to the various vendors. <clears throat> He's also a little casual about record keeping. You think you ought to delegate more authority so that things will move faster. Uh, how would you persuade him into delegating more authority? I mean, that could be another situation with the ally where, you know, not necessarily you're just talking through the ally. But you're also suggesting, oh, you know, you've done such a great job with this, but it's got to be so overburdensome. So why don't you have someone, you know, who's an ally? So obviously that person has face with Mr. Chen, also helping him with his workload. So it's harder, you know, or it's not as hard on him, and it's a little easier, and still maintaining his face for such a great job that he's done so far. Wow. Yeah, I like that. I like the way you worked in the compliment too. Yes. I think also to um, on the back where he said that sounds like something that wouldn't work in China or why would it work? We thought maybe you can appeal to the collectivism of the country and talk about how that nothing can be you, they can't be successful without the input of all the employees. So by delegating, you know, everyone would be working towards the common goal together. Okay. Uh, team four input. Uh, we basically said that if we allow Mr. Chen to like personally pick the person that would be in charge of um, delegating the payments or whatever, and he would still have so somewhat of a supervisory role over the whole <coughs> payment process, and so he'd still be able to, you know, be in charge because he's personally responsible in picking the person who's now taking over the payment. Okay. Yeah. Sounds, it sounds very logical, and that would save his face somewhat if he gets to personally choose the person. The, the key thing that our group talked about was, uh, you know, judging from his response, you're trying to get in the same mindset of him. And when you're trying to get in the same mindset of him in the power dynamics, you want the suggestion to actually be something that would enhance his power. So when you go to him and then you say, if you delegate it off to more people, then they can do more and then you can focus more of your time overlooking all of them. It actually gives you more control in the long term over more potential things that can happen and, oh, with, with the partnerships and the vendors and everything. So from that angle, it actually, your suggestion 
isn't something that's forcing him to do something in the American way that you originally did, which is why he rejected you initially. But it's mm -hmm. something that uh, it sounds like it would come from him, you know, that, that, that would benefit him. That's in his mindset. So that's where the emphasis of our group came from in that recommendation. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, we're not reducing your authority. We're, in fact, enhancing your authority by taking some of the burden away from you. Uh, Aaron? Is that uh, we were, our group was thinking somewhat similarly. Um, you want to say that, oh, you're so important to the company. You have a lot of important things to do. Maybe you want to delegate this. And it says that they're possibly looking to expand. So maybe you could talk about how, with the extra time, you could work towards the future of the company and expanding it. Um, and like bigger business opportunities or something like that. It was kind of the same thing they were saying. So. Okay. Well, very good. Um, does anybody have any supplementary comments on any of these recommendations? Blake? Going along with what they said, I think it's important to highlight his status and how it's more important for him to do uh, strategic tasks like you know being the visionary of the company rather than doing day-to-day -day administrative things. But definitely highlight his status and his wisdom when you're approaching him about that. Okay. Yeah. So, any other summary on recommendations? Pretty hot. Pretty hot. You avoided all the common pitfalls um, situation like this. Um, no, nobody made the recommendation of going over his head, which would have been terrible. <laughs> you, taught, you taught us well. <laughs> okay, no, nobody made that recommendation. That's great. It's the first time it hasn't happened. Today our students have had some practice applying cultural factors they've learned to a simulated case situation. Um, I think they did a pretty good job in identifying important things to consider in working with an international partner. Um, hopefully, this kind of exercise will be something that they can add to their overall knowledge and maybe be of some real benefit sometime in their future careers.